Very uh, strangely calm right now. If you look up at the sky, it's kind of just milky white. So here we're getting ready for some amount of a uh, hurricane or tropical storm to come in. Hey guys, I'm Chris from the Silver Symbol Channel, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about getting ready for a natural disaster. Now, most people out there often get overwhelmed and they just don't do anything. So I'm gonna focus specifically on what you can do to keep your devices running, power potentially your house, or any other type of electrical needs you may have. The most common question I get is, how long can I power something with one of those battery generators, a solar panel, or some other type of gas generator? And unfortunately, the answer to that question is impossible because it varies depending on what you wanna run, how long you want to run it and what the electrical needs of that appliance are. So instead of just giving you some phony numbers that aren't going to help you at all, I'm going to teach you how you can figure out exactly how much power your devices need and how long you can run them for. First, you need to determine what it is you want to run during a disaster. Nowadays, many people want to run their internet router, keep their TV on, or potentially something like an Xbox. But regardless of what you want to power, they always have one thing in common. In the United States, all electrical appliances are required to have some information on them. Here's a small electric heater. Now this thing's tiny physically, but electrically it uses quite a bit of power. If we take a look on the bottom, we can see that we have a label. Here it shows us, of course, the amount of voltage it requires, but the most important number is this, 1500 watts. But there is a catch. That 1500 watts is the maximum amount of electricity this heater can use. We've got three different settings. One setting just engages the fan, the other is a low and a high. That means electrically the fan uses only about 20 watts of power, the middle is around 750, and the high setting is 1500 watts. Another example appliance is this hot plate. This one can allow you to cook during a power outage if you power this directly using something like an EcoFlow or a traditional gas generator. And when we look at our label here, this appliance only uses 900 watts of power. But again, it's a bit more complicated than that because on the front we have a thermostat. Now when it's on, it does use the full 900 watts of electricity. But if you were boiling water, once the water came to a boil and the thermostat trips, you wouldn't be using any electricity at all until the temperature dropped and then it engaged again. And there is one more thing you absolutely need to know if you're getting ready for an outage. If you want to power something like an air conditioner or a refrigerator, those things have a trick up their sleeve and that's that they do not stay on all the time. If you think about your refrigerator, it may only run about 20% of every hour and that's exactly why a small power station like this EcoFlow River can actually power a refrigerator for over seven hours. And some air conditioners and refrigerators now use inverters and that means your power Power will actually go up and down while the appliance is running. Now you may feel like it's totally hopeless. How are you going to calculate all these things and figure out what kind of power system you need? What you want to do is look at each of those labels, figure out the maximum amount of power each of your appliances takes, and then keep that number in mind. Once you know that wattage, you can start to look at different options to supply your backup power needs. Here I have a couple of small EcoFlow products that can power a surprising amount of equipment. This is an EcoFlow River, and this is their Delta Mini. This river outputs 800 watts of electricity. This could not power power that electric hot plate or the electric heater, but this would be ideal to power say an LED light, your internet router, a Starlink router, or any number of communication devices. You might just use this to even keep your cell phones charged for a number of days. Now compare that to this model. This is the EcoFlow Delta Mini. It's tiny, but it can output 1800 watts of power. That means this small box can run that electric hot plate, the electric heater, for a certain amount of time. Now some appliances like a hot plate are ideal to run off of something like this, because you'll only be cooking for a small amount of time per day. But that brings us to the most important topic when you're considering a power station runtime. Now your appliance uses a certain amount of electricity that you saw on the label. Now this Delta Mini outputs 1800 watts of power so it can easily run the heater. But for how long is the next question. It's determined by the size of the battery inside each power station. Every power station on the market will give you two important numbers. In the case of the Delta Mini it can output 1800 watts of power. But the second number is the most important if you want to understand how long you can run a particular electric load for. And that is when they refer to something called a watt hour. In a power station's case, the Delta Mini can do 883 watt hours. That means it can run 883 watts for one hour. But I just said it could output 1800 watts. How can you only run 883 watts for one hour? That's less than 1800. That's because the two numbers actually have nothing to do with one another. Think about these
these power stations as cars. In a car, you have a top speed. Say you were lucky enough to have a Ferrari, you could go 200 miles per hour. The top speed of a car is like the electrical output of a power station. In the Delta Mini's case, it can do 1800 watts. But the next question, of course, is how far can that Ferrari drive? That's when we get into the watt hour rating. So the Ferrari can go 200 miles an hour, but if it only has a five gallon gas tank, it can only go that speed for a small amount of time. If you put a bigger gas tank, the Ferrari could maintain that speed for longer. And that's always the balancing system of power stations. You've always got the electrical output on one side and the size of the battery on the other, but they don't have to go hand in hand. And that's why you have to be careful about which power station you get to meet your specific needs. So in the Delta Mini's case, that unit is capable of 1800 watts of power. And that's fantastic. You can run a hot plate, you could power a refrigerator. But when a unit is smaller, they can only put in so large of a battery. So if you're using your Delta Mini to run at its full 1800 watts of output, it would only be able to run for about 30 minutes. Now you might be thinking that's a real scam, but it isn't at all because many people will buy a Delta Mini and only run about 200 watts of electricity at a time, say your internet router and a laptop. In that situation, that 883 watt hours wouldn't even be hit in one hour. If you're only running 200 watts per hour, you could run those small loads for over four hours. And that's the key difference between these battery power stations and a gasoline generator. Most gas generators have to run at a fixed speed and they can ultimately consume a ton of fuel just to run a very small load. And of course there are much bigger choices. In past videos I've shown you the Delta Pro setup I have in my basement. This setup uses four different modules. Two of them are Delta Pros and the other two are expansion batteries. Now each Delta Pro can output 3600 watts of power and each battery can output nearly 4000 watt hours of runtime. And because I'm using this combiner box, I'm actually able to put it together so that I can output 240 volts of power. The runtime will always be determined by your battery size. That's why this setup is considerably larger than the Delta Mini, but the actual electrical output that I could run is not that different. But now let's talk about 120 volts versus 240. Now in your home, you need to determine what you need to run. Here I'm in a rural setting and I depend on my well pump. Now just a few years ago, there were no power stations on the market that could even do this. EcoFlow came out with this box that combines two Delta Pros together and it allows me to output 240 volts. Now that's important because my well pump needs 240 volts. When you look inside your circuit breaker panel, you're probably familiar with these double pole breakers. Those typically indicate that they're a 240 volt appliance. Now some well pumps only require 120 volts and if that's the case, you wouldn't need this combiner box and you may be able to run them just off a single Delta Pro. This is exactly why I have such a hard time with that question when I get it in the comments. People want to know how long can they run their fridge? How long can they run a well pump? Well, it totally is determined by the type of appliance you have. But if I don't care about any of that and I just want to buy one product to run everything, what can I get? Well, for many people, the Delta Pro is kind of the silver bullet. It outputs a ton of power, has a very good amount of runtime, and it's expandable. But even the Delta Pro is going to have some limitations depending on what you want to run. So I live up in New Hampshire and we do get a lot of storms, so I typically want to be able to run my electric needs for about three days at a minimum and ideally I want to be set up for about five days and I get a lot of critical comments people saying you can't do that without a gas generator and depending on your needs you may still need to get a very large gas generator but if you're somebody that wants to run an all battery this Delta Pro setup can also be expanded using this gas generator that connects directly to the system it connects to the Delta Pro and tells it when it needs to get some extra charge so as those batteries are running down if you don't have solar input to charge them it will automatically fire up this gas generator and it will top those batteries off. Now others are gonna say, why not just get a gas generator? They're cheap, you can get a huge one, and that's not necessarily a bad decision. Now personally, I don't have a problem with engines, but I do all the maintenance, and that's unfortunately what most people don't do. I've bought many generators in my lifetime from folks that spend a lot of money up front, let the carburetors gum up, or just don't do the maintenance, but during a disaster, a gasoline generator in the wrong hands can be a nightmare. People do really dumb things. They run them in garages, they don't maintain them, and then that is never gonna give them any type of a backup. But for many people, these battery power stations are ideal. They don't want to deal with engines or handling any type of gasoline. You might live in an apartment and you just want to run your internet equipment or charge your phones. But the best tip I can share is don't be one of those people that never thinks the disaster is going to happen. Many people live that way and then when it does, they are completely unprepared. I understand that everybody doesn't have a fortune to spend on these things, but what you can do is figure out what is really critical during a disaster that you need to run. Look at those plates, figure out what type of power you really need to get by, and then try to see if you can get a power 
power station that's a good match to meet those needs. And fortunately, EcoFlow makes a ton of different models to fit just about every budget you can have out there. They start at 200 bucks and they go all the way up into the thousands if you want to get one of these Delta Pros expansion batteries. And of course, the greatest benefit of these power stations is you just push a button to turn them on. There's nothing to start and they can be stored and used safely inside the house. And full disclosure, EcoFlow did sponsor today's video, but it wasn't just all about products. They wanted me to share some real information on how people can be better prepared for their electrical needs during a disaster. And I've put links in the description below, so if you do want to check them out, they are running a bunch of deals this month that can save you some money and help you be better prepared for the winter.